Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, and we're at the fabulous Royal Quebec Golf Club here in Quebec City. And uh, we're going to be talking about number three on the list of the countdown from five to one on the worst things that you can do for your golf swing, the things that you don't want to focus on, okay? And um, this one's a doozy because I see this all the time. You, you go to the local driving ranges and uh, probably the most repeated thing on the planet insofar as golf instruction is concerned, and that's keep your head down. And, and that's got to be, you know, as, again, top three worst things to do, and, and here's why. So your head anatomically sits on a, on a swivel, and that swivel affords you about 70 degrees of range on average. So you notice how my, my chin can't make it all the way to my shoulder. So if you start off with your head right on the ball, and you don't move your head and you keep the head down, well, that's about as far as you can go. Now, then you try to go further and you actually get to drag yourself forward. So this is something I see on a consistent basis where we're resisting so much from not moving the head and keeping the head down that we actually drag ourselves in the mud. So. The, the golf swing is trying to go forward and off you go with that left knee forward and that pulls your center of gravity out of whack and now you're out of balance because you're trying to keep the head down. And so obviously you can't finish your backswing properly and since you can't finish the backswing well you can't whip the club with any kind of authority so you end up forcing the club to try and get some speed. Then you, you force the club straight into the ground because now you've, you've come too far forward and you're out of balance. And you got to hurry up and hit the ball before you miss it. Not a very pleasant scenario. That's just in the backswing. So in the follow through, trying to keep the head down, you're trying to go to the target and you're not allowing the head to come up. So what ends up happening is your right shoulder pulls the head forward, you drag yourself into the mud. And after a while, you're gonna stop doing that because you're trying to swing with some kind of authority, keep the head there, the shoulder rams into the side of your head, you hurt your neck, you hurt your shoulder, you start you know, pulling at the rotator cuff, you may even injure that rotator cuff if you're not careful, instead of allowing the head to come up and into the finish. Now, here's what we want to replace that with. So next time you're out on the golf course and you top a ball and the person next to you is saying, hey, you lifted your head. It wasn't that at all. Just go back to the original focus. What were you trying to do? Were you trying to hit the ball? Well, here's my head cut or uh, my, my driver. And if I wanted to do a little karate chop above the driver, no problem. Below the driver, no problem. Into the driver, no problem. We are that accurate. So if your club is on the grass and your eyes are on the ball and you're trying to hit the ball, well, you gotta come up to hit the ball. And that's when somebody says, hey, you came up, you tried to lift. Well, that's it. So if you come up to hit the ball, then you can't cut the grass. Now remember, the golf club is a grass cutting tool. Go to your local you know, hardware store or go to my website at wisdomandgolf.com and check out the pro shop and you'll see our, our Wisdom and Golf grass whip that was adapted with a golf grip and it's got a nice heavy toe on it so it, it really helps you not only cut the grass but it gets you to really feel what the golf swing should feel like when you're performing that task. So if I'm just cutting grass in both directions, and my students never fail at this, they look at the grass and they feel the blade on the grass and then they go ahead. Hear that sound? And they go ahead and cut grass. So if the sole of this blade cuts grass, notice what happens to the ball? It stays right there because I'm just cutting through this imaginary dandelion stem. Well, your golf club is first and foremost designed to cut grass. So you, you see the leading edge of the club, it's sharp enough to get through grass. Otherwise you couldn't play golf with it. 
and the sole of the club's wide enough so it doesn't dig too much because if it dug too much and it had the wrong bounce on it, you couldn't play golf with it either. It would keep digging itself into the ground like a submarine has these little wings that force it downwards so that it can, it can dive. So, whereas if you're trying to skip a stone on water, the stone is angled in a certain way. It's, you know, where it stays above water, like the pontoons of a, of a seaplane. So, if I swing the club back and through to cut grass, my focus is on the sole of the club shaving grass in the direction I want the ball to go. Then I bring that to the ball. Notice how I did that? There's how I find the distance between me and the ball. Bring that to the ball. Now, I just want to shave some grass. So my eyes are on the grass between the leading edge of the club and the ball. And I'm just going to allow gravity. And look at that gorgeous shave of grass, just like I had it there. So that's why we pay the golf courses the big bucks. They give us some beautiful grass like this, where the ball is sitting pretty on the grass blades. And it's just waiting for you to cut the dandelion stem but you insist on seeing a ball and trying to hit the ball. The ball cannot ever be your target. And you'll see that coming soon. One of the top two worst things to do, right? <laughs> I'm gonna save that one for you. So I'm going over there. That means I'm picking a spot in front of the ball that's gonna take me that way. That little blade, a little uh, yellow blade of grass. I see the grass I want to cut, I cut through the grass and in the direction I want that ball to go. And there we have it, another shave of grass and another ball in the center of the club face. So instead of trying to keep the head down, focus on cutting through grass. Now what's the best way to cut grass? Well, the best way to cut grass is to whip through the grass. So if my job was to cut grass all day, every day, eight hours a day. By the way, that would really make my golf swing fantastic. So I am allowing the blade to gather some nice momentum and I wanna be able to do that with no strain. So I'm looking for a nice range of motion. Well, if my head's down and not moving, huh, <laughs> that's about the extent of the range that I have. So I just hit myself twice. I don't have enough range of motion, therefore I have to push the blade and push the blade and push the blade and yank and shove it like a pit bull with a rag doll to try and get some work done. I won't last five minutes and, and then I'll abuse my body in the process. So instead, we have to allow the head to turn. So if you look at most of the players on tour, they allow the head to turn in the backswing and then as they're moving towards the target, you'll notice the head stays back because if the head moves forward, they can't go to the target anymore. So just the simple fact of staying with the target or with the task, I'm just cutting grass. So watch how I let my head go, cut the grass, cut the grass, let it cut, let it cut. So notice I got this beautiful range of motion and I'm never missing the grass. So, if I never miss the grass with the sole of my club, and I know where that grass is being cut, can you see how it's being cut exactly in the same place every time? And then I bring that over. Well, my job's done. All I gotta do now is let gravity cut the grass. So I'm looking for the feel of the sole of the club shaving grass, and I'm listening for it. So I'm letting it shave grass. That's bliss on a stick right there. The sound, the feel, clipping through the grass, the ball has to meet the center of the face when the sole of the club shaves grass. So isn't that wonderful? So stop trying to hit the ball. Next time you see somebody top a ball, show them how to use. The first thing you wanna do is put the ball in a tee, start with just a tee, and them cut through the tee. See that? You heard the tip of the tee being cut. Fantastic. Put a ball on it and say, hey, there's a tee down there. So let the sole of the club clip the tee. There we go. 
T gets clipped. I end up cutting my T. The ball meets the face, ball goes in the air and make sure that their eyes are on the sliver of grass between the leading edge of the club and the ball and they'll have fantastic contacts. The ball's gonna go in the air and they're gonna have a tremendous time playing this game. The rest is just gonna be about what angle club face do you want to use when you cut through because when you're cutting tees, you can cut with something that's closed. See, I'm sawing through the dandelion stem from toe to heel. I'm sawing through the dandelion stem from heel to toe. This would be a flop shot and a bunker shot. That would be a nice draw or an anti-slice. You can choose. <laughs> All right. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, that we can stop, you know, telling people to keep their heads down. It really isn't about that at all. It's about staying on the task of cutting grass in the direction of the target. And then, you know, golf will be a happy place for everybody. All the best. See you next week.